so i guess i'm connected and you can hear me and see me everything fine just write everything okay then we'll begin our session <clears throat> so i guess everything is fine you can hear me you can see me audio video is okay no issue Andy, sab badhiya sab changa okay so i presume everything is fine so you see i have i have been given one hour to discuss one topic the topic i have chosen today is hernia because of two good evening neha because of two reason number one of late i have realized that hernia has become very important last year in neat 2023 we had three questions from hernia <coughs> and then i nicity first paper first paper last year we had one question and second paper we had two question so in 2023 only we had five questions from hernia leave aside other exam upsc and all other exam so and second thing is hernia is very easy and very difficult topic it is easy once you know the anatomy it is difficult if you do not have your basics clear so we are going to discuss hernia rahnuma ayush revati not a gold medalist well try to be a gold medalist no problem uh, arunav and devika hope suchitra neha good evening to all of you on on, on already we had uh, four student who joined earlier so we are going to discuss hernia what i'll do i'll take about 10 minutes to tell you the anatomy once your anatomy is clear you will realize that rest everything is very easy and if you do not know your anatomy then classification everything is very difficult so i'll just tell you four five important facts points about anatomy let's understand the basic anatomy of inguinal canal yeah jay deepan priya good evening so let's understand the basic anatomy of inguinal canal and then i'll tell you the concept of inguinal hernia and at the end i'll show you about four five mcqs which has been asked in last 3 4 years okay so to understand hernia the first thing we have to know what all layers are there in the abdominal wall like this is the abdomen just don't write anything simply watch and follow everything is given in book we have to make our concept clear so this is the midline this is the rectus muscle we are talking about this area the inguinal area okay now if i move from abdomen to skin the first layer will be peritoneum as you know parietal peritoneum followed by just enter to peritoneum there is a thin layer of fat called preperitoneal fat or extra peritoneal fat anterior to fat is the layer fascia transversalis the innermost layer fascia transversalis then we have transversus abdominis muscle internal oblique muscle and external oblique muscle so from inside out i told you first layer is peritoneum then fat then fascia transversalis then transversus abdominis internal oblique external oblique again fat this fat is called subcutaneous fat it's below the skin it has campus and scapas fascia and finally we have skin to agar hum bahar se andar jayenge if we move from outside in first layer skin then fat then external oblique internal oblique transverse abdominis fascia transversalis again a fat layer and finally peritoneum so these are layers which we have to know the orientation in 3d what layer forms what an atrium of neural canal let's understand that so that is the first point we have to remember all the layers second point we have to know this is asis this is inguinal ligament and this is the pubic tubercle with the rectus muscle okay so 
if I take a line, a point which is center of the inguinal ligament, we call it mid point of inguinal ligament. Okay. And if I take a line from ASIS to pubic symphysis and take a midpoint, this is called mid inguinal point. So, I want you to understand that mid inguinal point and mid to point of inguinal ligament are two separate points. Mid point of inguinal ligament is a central point of the inguinal ligament, while <clears throat> mid inguinal point is a point from ASIS to pubic symphysis. In inguinal hernia, we are only concerned with this point, mid point of inguinal ligament, not mid inguinal point. So, we have understood two very basic things that the layers are from the peritoneum, then pre-peritoneal fat, then fascia transversalis, then transverse abdominis, internal oblique, external oblique, fat and skin. And second point I told you is mid inguinal point and mid point inguinal ligament are separate. In inguinal hernia anatomy, this is the point we are concerned with. That's the mid point inguinal ligament. Let's now understand one by one the layers. This is ASIS. This is inguinal ligament. And this is the pubic tubercle, this is the rectus muscle. This is peritoneum, then fat, then fascia, transversalis. Let's presume that this layer is fascia, inside layer, and there is a defect in fascia transversalis called deep ring or internal ring. So I want you to remember two points. This was a question of last year NEET. First point is that deep ring is a defect in fascia transversalis. It's not a defect in, in, one, in any muscle. It's a defect in fascia. And that was a question which I show, show you later on. The image was given, a arrow was given, and the arrow was pointing at the deep ring. And the question was, last year neat question, in which layer this defect is present, the deep ring. This is a defect in fascia transversalis. That's point number one. Point number two, it's above 1.25 centimeter from midpoint of inguinal ligament. So, I'll repeat, this is not above mid inguinal point. It is in relation to midpoint of inguinal ligament. Okay. So, two lines you remember. First, deep ring is a defect in fascia transversalis. 1.25 centimeter above the midpoint of ligament. Then the next layer is transverse abdominis. This is transversus, attached only from lateral one third of the ligament. Now, what you want to, what I want to remember, transverse abdominis goes above the internal ring, above the deep ring. It's not coming anterior to deep ring. It goes above and eventually gets attached here. So, transverse abdominis is only in superior relation and finally here, not anterior. It's going like this is the deep ring, it goes above like this, huh? superior. Then we have internal oblique like this. Internal oblique is in anterior relation, gets fused with transverse abdominis, forming conjoint tendon and getting attached here. So, conjoint tendon, this part is the fused part of transverse abdominis and internal oblique. And transversus is only superior to internal ring, while internal oblique is anterior and superior both. I mean, it is anterior here. You see it is anterior and here it is superior. While transverse is only superior, it is not anterior. So, then anterior to this is, let us de delete all this, whatever I have drawn here. So, I will repeat. Transverse abdominis goes, it is attached to lateral one third, goes superior to deep ring and then gets inserted a pubic bone while internal oblique is anterior and superior both and finally gets attached. Then finally we have external oblique here, here forming a triangular defect although we call it ring, this is superficial ring or external ring. The defect is kind of triangular like this, like this. In between the two lips there are intercrural inter fiber here making it somewhat semicircular, but actually it is triangular in shape. This defect is in 
external oblique aponeurosis so the defect of deep ring is in fascia the defect of superficial ring is external oblique here external oblique and these two muscle internal oblique and transverse abdominis transversus is only lateral and superior <coughs> sorry while internal is anterior and superior then finally posterior so this is the external ring let's draw another diagram this is asis inguinal ligament pubic tubercle and bone this is the deep ring this is the external ring and this is the inguinal canal a hernia coming out from the deep ring and going towards turn, uh, scrotum is called indirect inguinal hernia indirect one hernia here we have a artery inferior epigastric artery a hernia coming from this area is called direct hernia what is this area this area is called hassel back strangle hassel back strangle what are the boundaries of hassel back strangle inferior epigastric artery inguinal ligament and rectus muscle this is hassel back strangle so hernia coming out from deep ring or internal ring lateral to inferior epigastric artery is indirect hernia this is a indirect hernia coming from deep ring and this is a direct hernia medial to inferior epigastric artery coming from hassel back strangle only one thing i would like to clarify here which is 3d watch carefully this is difficult to understand so watch carefully this is asis the internal ring is here canal is here right deep ring is here transverse abdominis goes like this like this not anterior relation only superior then gets inserted while internal oblique here is anterior to the canal here it is superior and finally it goes behind like let's take something let's take my hanky suppose this is the inguinal canal i'm not sure whether you can see me or not let me check yeah it's visible so if this is the canal the internal oblique is anterior superior and finally posterior so conjoint tendon will go posterior so if this is asis inguinal ligament and pubic tubercle the conjoint tendon going like this so let's say this is internal oblique this is transverse abdominis they both fuse here so this part shown by green color is conjoint tendon which is posterior it has gone posterior while this part is anterior this part and this is superior let's understand it here let's see the diagram first of all a midpoint of inguinal ligament is called mid one inguinal ligament and deep ring is in relation to this point huh? not with mid inguinal point that's the point number one point number two see this image this is external oblique forming the external ring and i'm sure you can see a nerve coming out here ilioinguinal nerve this is a question please remember what is the most commonly injured nerve in hernia surgery open hernia surgery the most commonly injured nerve is ilioinguinal you can see here this is the nerve so the moment we cut the external oblique the nerve may get injured this question is asked in another way after hernia surgery patient complains of paresthesia at the root of penis or medial aspect of thigh which nerve is injured the answer is ilioinguinal nerve well once you cut the external oblique now you see conjoint tendon this is the conjoint tendon this is the internal oblique which is anterior this is the transverse abdominis which is superior only not anterior and here they form the conjoint tendon which is going behind the inguinal uh, canal okay so this part is posterior and if i take this cord away like if i take this cord away 
this area is fascia transversalis and the deretania comes out from here. Let's see the 3D image. Anterior wall is formed by external oblique. But in this area, there will be internal oblique as well. So external oblique forms the anterior wall and this is the roof. What is forming the roof? Conjoint tendon which will go behind. So the anterior wall is external oblique and internal oblique. Internal oblique is only in this area. While posterior wall is fascia transversalis. The whole thing is fascia. But here you have conjoint tendon as well. So posterior wall is fascia and medially conjoint tendon. The flow, the inferior most part is inguinal ligament. But here we have lacrimal ligament which you will understand when I will discuss laparoscopic hernia and superiorly this conjoint tendon, laterally internal oblique. So you see this is the transversus abdominis only going superior and finally posterior. This is the internal oblique which is anterior, superior and here it is posterior. And this is the inguinal ligament forming the floor or the base and this part is lacrimal ligament which I will explain later on. Let us see the Hesselbach triangle boundaries, inferior epigastric artery, rectus muscle and inguinal ligament and through this area if we have a hernia that is called direct inguinal hernia, through this area if I have some, something coming out that is indirect inguinal hernia. So the boundaries are see here. This is the anterior boundary which is this, what is this external oblique. But behind this here will be internal oblique as well. So external oblique and internal oblique both form the anterior boundary, anterior. Posterior is fascia transversalis, this is the posterior boundary, fascia. But medially there will be conjoint tendon as well. Superiorly only conjoint tendon going like this. Inferiorly inguinal ligament but medially lacuna as well and laterally gender oblique muscle. Although boundaries normally they do not ask, they do not ask the boundaries but one should know. So just to revise the anatomy once more, this is ASIS, this is inguinal ligament, this is the rectus muscle, fascia forming the deep ring, transverse abdominis forming the superior and then the goes posterior. Internal oblique forming the anterior and conjoint tendon and posterior, and finally external oblique forming the anterior boundary and external ring. So, to now I'll tell you a very very important Nahes classification. This is quite important. I'll tell you five MCQ which has already been asked on this. Deco Nahes maybe don't use the term direct and direct hernia. For direct hernia, we say posterior wall weak or you can say the fascia transversalis weak. For indirect hernia, we say deep ring is wide. That is the nomenclature you have to remember. Indirect hernia coming out from deep ring. So for indirect hernia, deep ring is wide but for direct hernia, fascia is weak. So this is the term normally you will find although we can get direct and direct word also but more often they do not use the term direct and direct. For direct they use the posterior ball weak term and for indirect they use deep ring well. <coughs> so <coughs> Nahes type 1 and type 2 both are indirect hernia 1 and 2 both. In 1 the posterior wall is normal in 2 the posterior wall or fascia is normal. Why it is normal? Because that is the site for direct hernia. It has to be normal. It is indirect hernia. Now in 1 the deep ring is normal while in 2 the deep ring is white. So what is the difference in 1 and 2? Both are indirect hernia. Deep ring is normal in indirect hernia um, um, in type 1 and deep ring is white in type 2. Now this is congenital hernia. This is a question. Remember this. So now has the congenital hernia is type 1. Type 2 is a normal indirect hernia with wide deep ring. Type 3 is A, B and C. A is pure direct hernia. By direct hernia what do we mean? By direct hernia we mean the 
posterior wall or the fascia will be weak while the deep ring will be normal because it's a direct hernia so posterior wall is weak deep ring normal type 3b is a direct plus indirect hernia i guess you may know the name for direct and indirect is pentaloon hernia which is again mcq all these red words mcq it's also mcq what's the direct hernia so pentaloon hernia is 3b direct and indirect both so here p a n t a l w o n here the posterior wall is weak plus deep ring is also white so and type 3c is femoral hernia that's another question And four is recurrent hernia. <clears throat> four A, B, C, and D. A is a direct recurrent hernia. B is a indirect recurrent hernia. C is a femoral recurrent hernia, and D is a mixed recurrent hernia. So just to revise the Nahes classification, type one is a indirect hernia with normal posterior wall, normal deep ring. That's a congenital hernia. Type 2 is a indirect hernia with wide ring. Type 3 A is a direct hernia, weak wall, posterior wall, normal ring. 3 B, pentaloon, direct hernia, both. 3 C, femoral hernia. So, this is a Nahes classification. Indirect hernia and indirect, both are indirect. But here the ring is normal and here the deep ring is enlarged. 3 A is a direct hernia, 3 B, indirect and direct, both. And 3 C is a femoral hernia. Okay? This you please remember, you have many questions on this. Now, what investigation will you order? We only order ultrasound, that is the investigation of choice. Although not a MCQ question, a Viber question, what you want to see in ultrasound? First of all, we want to confirm our diagnosis, but this is not, not what the exam, examiner wants to hear. He wants to hear that we will look for other causes also what are the other causes like bph old patient having bph can have direct hernia due to abdominal pressure and if i treat hernia without treating prostate he will have recurrence so this gets priority so always look for other intra abdominal causes especially bph so ultrasound should always be ordered mri is only for sports hernia which already is a question what is it? Sports hernia. CT is rarely done. Herniography is obsolete investigation. Not done anymore. This we can cut. Well, what's a sports hernia? Let's understand that. Dekho. Sports hernia is called athletic pubalgia. Sports hernia or a sportsman hernia. Now, two words are clear. Athletic, seen in athlete, pubalgia means pain in pubic area. This is seen in athletes, that's why the term is sports hernia. Patient doing stretching, doing yoga, doing gymnastics, doing, uh, you know, football, is doing something. He comes with pain in groin area. Why? Due to a sprain of muscle. So, sports hernia is not a normal hernia. Rather, it's a misnormal. It's a sprain of groin muscle. So many muscles are there, suas, adductor, rectus. So it gets pain there due to stretching. And MRI will show you the soft tissue injury. So this question has been asked. What's the investigation for a sports hernia? Answer is MRI. Let's understand the treatment. In treatment, we have three term herniotomy. Only and only done for congenital hernia, which I'll tell you at the end. Congenital hernia and congenital hydrocele. So this is only done for congenital hernia and hydrocele hernia. What it is, iski baad baad mein karenge. Then we have herniography and herniaplasty. This is done in adults, while this is for congenital. 
the difference is the repair the repair done by local tissue surrounding tissue repair done by mesh i want you to remember three four names in herniography the first one is bessonese repair bessonese repair bessoni is father of modern hernia surgery and he stitched inguinal ligament to conjoint tendon conjoint tendon stitched to inguinal ligament bessoni b e s s i n i second surgery shoulders here you remember one line double breasting of fascia transversalis double breasting overlapping double breasting b r e s t i n g of fascia transversalis these two are important surgery in tissue repair bessonies and shoulders then we have de sarda d e s a r d a we have darning and we have some more repair macquies etc so bessonies and shoulders are two very basic surgery herniography while hernioplasty is a mesh repair and the name you remember lichenstein repair l e i c h t e n yeah gilbert is not important nowadays uh, uh, arunav but because you have asked i'll tell you gilbert also till date in last 25 years only one question has been asked in gilbert when i was doing my residency and i started teaching that time gilbert was important nahes was not in vogue but now nahes has become important so i will tell you gilbert also let me finish this so lichenstein repair and one question here remember the mesh property best is lightweight and big pore b i g p o r e lightweight and big pore this is a question of aims what is the best mesh lightweight and big pore tap repair laparoscopic tap repair laparoscopic these are also mesh repair this i'll discuss later on so if you see this diagram this diagram gives you a idea let's draw here asis inguinal ligament and pubic tubercle if i open the skin and i open the external oblique this is the rectus muscle then i will get this image external oblique has been opened this is the conjoint tendon so this is conjoint tendon here this is the inguinal ligament here internal ring and cord this whole space shown by blue color or rather yellow color is covered by mesh this is the mesh so remember and mesh can be marlex gortex buprolin in stopa is not used nowadays stopa also is a uh, mesh repair stopa is not used stopa is like tap uh, tap repair of laparoscopy which you do by open so lightweight and big pore mesh are considered best and this whole thing is the mesh covering the weak area this is the mesh you can see this is the deep ring here the cord coming out here and mesh is covering the whole area see another image here this is the mesh cup this is the external oblique here let me say let me write here e so e is the external oblique f is the fat s is the skin and what you are looking at is the here hasselbach strangle and internal ring which you cover by the mesh so here this ilio inguinal nerve will not be here this will be somewhere here because already we have placed it lately ilio hypogastric will be here and genital branch and genital nerve will be here three nerve you come across in hernia surgery this is the genital branch of genito femoral may be injured not very important this is the ilio inguinal which is the most important nerve gets injured very often ilio hypogastric little higher up so 
this is the concept of hernia surgery and Gilbert I'll tell you now because Gilbert is not important but because you have asked so I'll tell you Gilbert then I'll tell you Stropias. Look what Gilbert is in Gilbert. 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. There are 5 types and only 3 criteria. Number 1 size of internal ring, deep ring, how big it is for indirect hernia. Second position of sac, whether the hernia has a peritoneal sac, yes or no. And third condition of fascia transfer salin. So quite obvious the indirect hernia the problem will be here and indirect hernia the problem will be in fascia transfer salis. The 1, 2, 3 are indirect hernia, 4 and 5 are direct hernia. So in 1, 2, 3 the sac is present, sac is present, sac is present, fascia normal, normal and normal. Only internal ring will divide 1, 2, 3. So less than 1 centimeter, 1 to 2 centimeter, more than 2 centimeter. That is the size of deep ring, internal ring. So only the internal ring less than 1 centimeter size, 1 to 2, more than 3 is 1 to 3. While 4 and 5 direct hernia, so this is normal here, sac is absent. The fascia is weak and in 5, fascia is desiccated. By desiccated, I mean fibers are separated. While in 4, it is only weak, it protrudes out. I will tell you the question which has been asked. Later on, 6 and 7 were added. 6 is a pentaloon hernia and 7 is a femoral hernia. So the only question I have seen in Gilbert is what is type 7? That was the only question that to us quite few years back, not a new question. So <coughs> Gilbert is not an important classification. We can skip Gilbert. Nahes, I will request you to remember. So 1, 2, 3 are indirect hernia, size less than 1 centimeter, 1 to 2, more than 2, that's 1, 2, 3. And 4 and 5 are direct hernia, weak fiber, 4 and desiccated fiber, 5. That's it. So Gilbert is not very difficult, but and not very important either. If you can remember, it's good. Cannot remember, fine. But remember Nahes. Now I will tell you some terminologies of hernia. One is hernia in W. Some rare types of hernia and terminologies of hernia. See, when there is a sac, bowel comes out. It's a normal hernia. There is a sac, bowel comes out, goes back again, comes out and goes back. So instead of one loop, you have two loops. This is called hernia N W here. Two loops. What is the clinical importance? Clinical importance is that the gangrene starts from here. The part which is in the abdomen. The internal ring is here. That this part is not visible. I can only see this part. So whenever you have two loops of bowel, make sure that you don't put the loop back in repair unless you have seen the apex. That is the area which undergoes gangrene. So that is a Meidel's hernia or hernia N W. What is sliding hernia? Sliding in one hernia. So that is called hernia N glissade. Hernia N glissade. Deco, this is the fascia transversalis with deep ring, internal ring. This sac comes out, this is the peritoneum, may have a bubble loop inside, may have a omentum inside, whatever. But in sliding hernia, this structure which is outside, the extra peritoneal tissue, they herniate and come in the con, forming the wall of the sac. So normally from the right side, either cecum or bladder or on the left side, bladder or segment, it will come and form the wall here. It cannot become a content, it is extra peritoneal. So sliding hernia or hernia in glissade is when the extra peritoneal tissue comes out forming the wall of the sac like cecum like here. So this is a normal hernia you can see bowel will come or omentum will come. The cecum is here in case cecum also descends here forming the wall like you can see here this is the sac bowel and this is the cecum forming the wall then this is called sliding hernia or hernia in glissade. What is Richter's hernia? The whole bowel doesn't come out. 
only a part of circumference comes out. That's the Richter hernia. And Richter hernia presents with diarrhea. And it is much more common in femoral hernia or in obturator hernia. Rarely it can be found in um, in, guanal, in der direct hernia, never get Richter's hernia. So this is a hernia in W and this is a Richter's hernia. The continuity of the bowel is there, the patency is there, settle ever present with obstruction. Now what is a pentaloon hernia? Pentaloon hernia is a direct and indirect both hernia. And what is reduction in mass? This is a INICT last year question, 2023 question. Reduction in mass, like this is a loop having the bowel inside. When you squeeze the sac, the bowel goes in. The sac remains here. The sac will remain here. Only the bowel goes in. But in reduction in mass, the whole sac goes in with a closed neck. So not the same image. But the image was given and it was asked what this phenomena is known as. So when you squeeze the sac and the whole sac goes in, not the bowel goes in, the sac remains the only bowel goes back. But here the whole sac goes in with the bowel with a closed neck, that's called reduction in mass. See, the whole sac has gone in. These are the main types which they ask. Richter's hernia is basically one, circ one wall comes. Pentaloon is direct and indirect both. M. Yarns is a appendix as a content. Litters is a meckles as content. Sliding cecum comes out or bladder comes out forming the wall. And mydels or hernia and W, two loops come, comes out. This part becomes gangrenous. So these are some of the rare terminologies and hernia which they do ask. These are relatively important but I'll tell you less important hernias which you will find in MCQ, but rarely asked. So lumbar hernia, what question they ask? They ask the boundaries. Superior lumbar triangle called Grenfelt, G-R-E-N-F-E-L-T. Inferior lumbar triangle called Petit. What are the boundaries of Grenfelt hernia? Boundaries are 12th rib. Here, this is the 12th rib. Internal oblique, this is the internal oblique and quadratus lumborum, this is quadratus lumborum. So Grenfeld hernia or the superior lumbar hernia boundaries are 12th rib, internal oblique and quadratus lumborum. While inferior lumbar, lumbar triangle, the boundaries are iliac crest, see this is the iliac crest, this one. Latissimus dorsi, this is Latissimus dorsi, and external oblique. So I'll just repeat the boundaries of superior lumbar triangle, twelfth rib, quadratus lumborum, and internal oblique, and inferior lumbar triangle, iliac crest, Latissimus dorsi, and external oblique. So these are the boundary, and they, they do ask superior lumbar triangle called Grenfeld triangle. Inferior called petted triangle. Remember one more thing. In European hernia society classification, lumbar hernia is called L4. This is L4. Lateral 1 to the 4. It is L4, which I'll tell you later on. So laparoscopic hernia, now comes the new and most difficult part. Remain focused for next 10 minutes. You will answer all the questions. They go. First, the two term tap repair and tap repair. Tap is uh, tap is totally extra peritoneal repair. This is the peritoneum. I am not opening the peritoneum. My whole repair is inside peritoneum. No pneumoperitoneum created, no CO2 insufflated, the whole surgery outside the peritoneum. While tap is trans-abdominal pre-peritoneal. So I am going through the peritoneal cavity, cutting the transabdominal preperitoneal. Trans go, go through the abdomen. So making a pneumoperitoneum, going through the abdominal cavity and doing the surgery. So totally extra peritoneal, tap repair, no pneumoperitoneum. You throw the surgery remains outside the peritoneum. Tap transabdominal preperitoneal. 
now comes the like this is the peritoneum here this is the peritoneum here in tap we don't open the peritoneum we remain outside totally except in tap trans abdominal pre now i will show you two images which can become image based question this is a normal chokar in cannula and when you have a triangular attachment here like this then this is called Hassan's cannula so this is one potential image based question you can get a image of Hassan's cannula how to differentiate Hassan's from a normal cannula this triangular thing you will not find in normal cannula so in lap hernia we have to use Hassan's cannula that's point number one always we have to use Hassan's cannula especially in tape repair number two <coughs> this is scope or a camera through which we see this is cut surface like this this is cut surface like this there are different angles 0 degree 30 degree 45 degree 70 degree in hernia repair we use 30 degree scope so in hernia repair of laparoscopy we use Hassan's cannula and we use 30 degree scope so remember in tape repair totally extra -protonal. We don't need various needle, no pneumopartium created. Rather, we need Hassan's cannula and 30 degree scope. This is a potential MCQ they can ask about instrument. Now, I will tell you very, very confusing, very, very new topic, very frequently asked. Triangle of doom, triangle of pain, trapezoid with disaster, myopartium reference of free shot. I just want to, you to remain focused for next 10 minutes. I am sure you will understand then i will show you some mcq this is the most important part of new hernia concept this is asis inguinal ligament and pubic tubercle here this is the rectus muscle and this is the psoas i am making a uh, inguinal hernia from the inside this is the right inguinal area from the inside this is the abdominal view don't consider this right left this is right abdominal view inside above the swas this is peritoneum even if you don't draw it's absolutely fine just watch for five minutes you will understand what kind of question they ask this is peritoneum this thing you can say is the fascia transversalis we are looking from inside this is the deep ring in fascia this line is called arcuate line which is the lower border of posterior rectus sheath this of course is the rectus muscle this is external iliac vein this is external iliac artery and this is the femoral nerve the same thing will become femoral vein artery and nerve when we, when we go below the guanine ligament so once we go below inguinal ligament, this will become femoral vein, this becomes femoral artery, this becomes femoral nerve. But right now in the abdomen, above the inguinal ligament, we call this external iliac vein, artery and nerve. This is the obturator foramen through which obturator hernia takes place and this is the obturator artery. And of course nerve, here will be nerve also and vein also. So just to revise what, what I have drawn here, this is the psoas, this is peritoneum this is the inguinal ligament here this line is the inguinal ligament and rectus muscle this is the fascia transversalis this whole thing and this is the inferior epigastric artery and the vein so this is the area of indirect hernia this is the area of direct hernia okay so this much i'm sure you know now i'm going to tell you which really confuses you this green line here here is called pectineal ligament okay this green line and this light green ligament here between the inguinal ligament material this is called lacunar ligament so this part is lacunar ligament and this is in pectineal ligament okay so you have understood if this much you have understood 90 percent job is done so i'll repeat this violet thing is lacunar ligament and this uh, blue thing is in pectineal ligament okay and this is the 
femoral triangle this light blue which i'll discuss later on so you can see here this is the area of indirect hernia this violet dot this uh, this area of femoral hernia sorry direct and indirect hernia this whole thing i have to cover here i have to push put a mesh here covering this area this is the weak area called myopectin orifice of free shot that also is important mcq we'll discuss that so this area this area and this area needs to be covered in any hernia surgery this area shown by blue color should not be interfered with that's a dangerous area that's not an area i want to enter there will be bleeding and nerve injury see this is the vast difference this violet line is vast difference this red line is gonadal artery gonadal can very well be called as internal spermatic or genital or testicular artery and this is peritoneum this triangle vast difference testicular artery and peritoneum is called triangle of dome this area so what are the boundaries of triangle of dome medially it is vast difference here you see here here this one this one here laterally it is testicular artery or gonadal artery and inferiorly here it is peritoneum and what are the content you can see here external like vein and external like artery so we have external iliac vein and external iliac artery as a content so if i enter in this triangle we might damage the artery they can be bleeding this is called triangle of doom plus we have one more content here genital branch of genitofemoral nerve so the content of triangle of doom are the kind boundaries are vast difference peritoneum and testicular artery content are external iliac vein external iliac artery and and genital branch of the nerve so this is the vast difference here let's come to this area called triangle of pain here so triangle of pain boundaries are testicular artery peritoneum and this is called inguinal ligament from inside we call it iliopubic tract so triangle of pain boundaries are number one same gonadal artery or spermatic artery or testicular arteries all are same gonadal artery second is peritoneum covering the swas and third is ileo pubic tract let's see it again this is the testicular artery the blue line uh, yellow line this is the peritoneum the brown line and this is the ileo pubic tract the light blue line this is a triangle of and here we have three, four nerves four nerves lateral to medial what are those four nerves the lateral most nerve is lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh this is a question of last year neat which nerve is most commonly injured in laparoscopic hernia surgery i told you yeah i will show you the diagram don't worry women just give me two minutes so i told you one question was defect and deep ring and they asked where it is that was the facial transverse then i told you second question which nerve is injured most common in the lap hernia surgery lateral cut in open hernia it is the ileo inguinal nerve in laparoscopic hernia this is the nerve which is most commonly injured lateral cutaneous nerve thigh don't go inferior and lateral to ileo pubic tract this black line is ileo pubic tract don't go inferior lateral to this the second nerve is anterior cutaneous nerve third nerve is femoral branch of genito femoral nerve and fourth is femoral nerve the lateral to medial four nerves are lateral cutaneous nerve thigh anterior cutaneous nerve femoral branch of genito femoral nerve and femoral nerve now even if you see here probably you will get a better idea 
This is a view from inside of the right inguinal area. This is the psoas muscle. This. This black thing is psoas muscle. Peritoneum has been removed because this is a cadaver image. This is the rectus muscle RM. This is posterior sheath ending here. <coughs> this is the transverse abdominis muscle forming the conjoint. The C is conjoint tendon. The fascia transversal is cut. You can see it has been cut. So this is the indirect hernia. This is external iliac vein and artery, these two, giving inferior epigastric artery and vein. This is the inferior epigastric artery and vein. So, this is a direct hernia and this is a, sorry, this is an indirect hernia and this is a direct hernia. These nerves, this is a laparoscopic view. This is the inguinal ligament here, here like this. This is the inguinal ligament here. This is the pubic bone. This is the pubic bone. This is the pectineal ligament. And this blue thing is the lacunar ligament. This green is the inguinal ligament. Same thing I drew. So, from inside, this green line is pectineal ligament above the pubic bone. This blue line is inguinal ligament and this violet thing is lacunar ligament. This red area is femoral ring having femoral hernia. This is indirect hernia, this is direct hernia here. This is a view from inside. Why it becomes difficult? Because we learn from outside but in lab we see from inside. Now, this is the vast difference I am writing VD. This is the testicular artery or gonadal artery I am writing GA, gonadal artery. And here will be the peritoneum. So, this triangle here would be called triangle of doom. And what you see inside triangle of doom, I am sure you can see an artery and nerve, inferior uh, internal iliac artery, this one anterior like vein. While this is triangle of pain, this is triangle of pain. What are the boundaries of triangle of pain? Gonadal artery, peritoneum and iliopubic tract. Let us see another image. Inguinal ligament, black line. Pectineal ligament, green line. Lacuna ligament, blue area. And this is the triangle of doom, this. Green triangle is triangle of doom. What are the boundaries? Vast difference, Tesla artery and peritoneum. Having two arteries, you can vein artery. And this is the triangle of pain. Now, so I will tell you. So, I guess you have understood the boundaries. Very important, very frequently asked. This obturator artery may be connected in free epigastric artery. This artery, it is not a normal artery. You see? This is not a normal artery. This will come in our field. So, this is what I was saying. This area I will not enter, this black triangle. And this area where I will do my repair, the blue area called myopectoral reference of few short. And this artery connecting inferior epigastric to obturator, not a normal artery. In 25% cases, only this artery is prominent called corona mortis or accessory obturator artery. Accessory obturator. What is this? This is the artery I was talking about. This artery between obturator and inferior epigastric artery. Corona mortis. This is a problem because this can bleed during surgery. This artery can bleed. Okay. See another image. This black line from inside is called iliopubic tract. This is transversus abdominis, TR. This is rectus. Internal ring, that's indirect tenia, and as far as I can, the direct tenia. Pubic bone is here, the red area, and lacunar ligament is here, the blue area. 
from inside. This is triangle of dome, black triangle. This is triangle of pain, the green triangle. What are the boundaries of triangle of dome? Vast difference peritoneum and tesla artery. And what are the boundaries of triangle of pain? Tesla artery, peritoneum and iliopubic tract. And these are the four nerves lateral to medial. Lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh, anterior cutaneous nerve, femoral branch of joint of a nerve and femoral nerve, four nerves. And this nerve is most commonly injured in laparoscopic hernia surgery. So together these two, so this is the iliopubic tract, this is the peritoneum and this is the test artery, boundary of pain, triangle of pain. Together these two triangles are called trapezoid of disaster. So triangle of pain and dome together is called trapezoid of disaster. Okay. Well, so this is about laparoscopic hernia. One last point. This is the pubic bone. This is the bladder. I have to create a space here, pre-vesicle space, retropubic space. This is called space of retzius. Hernia ring will be here. So space of retzius is just pre-vesicle space. Now the last part, myopectineal orifice of short. This is the area we have to strengthen. What is this? Let's see from anterior. This is ASIS. This is inguinal ligament. This is the pubic bone, the ramus. This is the rectus muscle. This is conjoint tendon and this is the psoas. This area, sorry, this area is called myopectineal orifice of Frischot. This is what we have to repair. We have to strengthen only this area. They ask the boundary. What is the lateral boundary? Lateral boundary is psoas, ilio psoas. What is the inferior boundary? This is the pubic bone, the pubic pectineous ligament on pubic bone. What is the medial boundary? Medial boundary is rectus. And what is the superior boundary? Superior boundary is conjoint tendon. Actually, I have chosen this topic because this I presume is very easy and very difficult and has become very important. So generally, the students are very confused when all this is asked. If you just remain focused and revise once or twice, I'm sure you'll remember all the points. So lateral is psoas, inferior is pubic bone with pectineal ligament, medial is rectus and superior is conjoint tendon. I will show you an image from outside as well as inside. This is the rectus psoas, that's red. This is pubic bone pectineus. This is medial rectus muscle. And this is superior conjoint tendon. This is what they ask. Now, this is from inside the same image we, I showed you earlier. Vast difference here, Tesla artery, triangle of doom, pain. This is the pubic bone. This is the pectineal ligament, this one, this is inguinal ligament, this is the lignal ligament. But the this is, I will use red color to highlight, conjoint tendon here, rectus here, pubic ramus here, and psoas here. This area is called myopectoral reference of few shot. Please remember the boundaries. Now, this these are some questions. Question number one. Hernia through the defect shown in picture. This is a 2023 question. They showed deep ring and they asked from where this hernia, of where the defect is. Well, this is not a 2023 question, sorry. This is an indirect hernia. The question was where the defect is, in which tissue the defect is. The answer was fascia transversalis. This is another question. An inexperienced surgeon was doing hernia repair. He opened the sac and found two loops. What is the meaning of two loop? It's a Midel's hernia, hernia NW. And he did not see the apex and he simply pushed the bowel back and repaired. What problem he might face? There is a risk of bowel gangrene. He may miss the gangrene.
because gangrene starts from here he did not he did not see the apex so that's another see this question this again is a neat question during laparoscopic all hernia repair the surgeon has placed a tacker lateral and inferior to iliopubic tract post operatively patient comes of pain and soreness and thigh so the the fixator the anchor the tacker the suture has been applied lateral and inferior now pain and soreness in the lateral part of thigh so which nerve most likely is injured here this i told you earlier this is a very recent neat question last year question was which nerve is most commonly injured answer is same and earlier they asked a question like this clinical question answer is a lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh which i hope you have understood now another question this is a aims question which of the following is correct regarding the boundaries of triangle of doom and you know the boundaries vas deferens inguinal ligament and peritoneum so medially sorry not inguinal ligament uh, tesla artery vas deferens tesla artery and peritoneum so medially it is vas deferens laterally gonadal vessel inferiorly peritoneum so this is the right answer another question this is a aims question regarding the boundaries of laparoscopic anatomy of inguinal hernia laparoscopic anatomy false statement is medial boundary of triangle of doom is vas deferens which is right marked orifice is bounded superiorly by inferior oblique this is conjoint tendon this is right marked orifice inferiorly by iliac tract no sorry this is wrong inferiorly uh, this was actually lateral boundary my fault this is lateral boundary so this inferior boundary is not iliac tract inferior boundary is the pubic ramus and pubic uh, pubic ligament here the option was lateral this is misprinting this was also right this is the wrong statement so this is a last year inicity question i just want to emphasize one point if the sac is superior and lateral to inferior artery it's a indirect hernia superior and medial it's a direct hernia and the sac is inferior and lateral this is a femoral hernia inferior lateral to pubic tubercle this was a question last year i nicity only a young female presents with pain and vomiting in emergency clinical examination reveals a swelling lateral and below the pubic tubercle there is a obstruction also so what is the most probable lateral and below let's see this image again so ans question says lateral and below so obviously answer is estrangulated femoral hernia you have many questions like this now before i finish i will just take 5 minutes and i will tell you a european hernia classification society classification this is very frequently asked this was asked this year in fmg this was asked last year in inicity dekho this is the yes v1 three words incarcerated is very vague word the specific words are number 1 irreducible hernia by the bowel cannot be reduced number 2 obstructed hernia when you have features of obstruction number 3 strangulated hernia when you have features of gangrene so if gangrene vessel are compromised that's strangulated bowel is healthy but obstructed that's obstructed and only the content cannot be reduced back that's irreducible hernia three term irreducible obstructed and strangulated incarcerated is a vague term used for all three so hernia in this area is called ventral hernia <coughs> ventral hernia which is divided into m1 m2 m3 m4 and m5 five area in ventral hernia and it's 3 cm from xiphoid i'll take 3 cm draw a line that's m1 from umbilicus i'll take 3 cm above and draw a line below umbilicus 3 cm draw a line and pubic bone 3 cm draw a line so you draw four lines xiphoid Three centimeter below, I'm like a three centimeter above, three below I'm like a and three from zephoid, and they become M1 to M5. M1 is called sub zephoid. You have questions or so listen? I'll tell you the question also. Sub zephoid. M2 is called epigastric. This is M2. 
एम थ्री इज कॉल्ड अम्बिलाइकल एम फोर इज कॉल्ड इंफ्रा अम्बलाइकल एंड एम फाइव इज कॉल्ड सुपरा प्यूबिक सो एम वन इज सब्जेफॉइड एम टू इज एपिगास्ट्रिक एम थ्री अम्बलाइकल एम फोर इंफ्रा अम्बलाइकल एम फाइव सुपरा प्यूबिक टू क्वेश्चन वन क्वेश्चन एम्स क्वेश्चन अम्लाइकल हर्निया इज हाउ मेनी सेंटीमीटर ऑन आइदर साइड ऑफ अम्लाइकल थ्री सेंटीमीटर ऑन आइदर साइड दिस होल थिंग इज कॉल्ड अम्लाइकल हर्निया सेकेंड क्वेश्चन अम्लाइकल हर्निया कम्स इन विच एम ग्रुप इट कम्स इन द एम थ्री सो रिमेंबर एम वन टू एम फाइव थ्री सेंटीमीटर फ्रॉम जे फाइव थ्री अब अम्लाइकल थ्री बिलो अम्लाइकल एंड थ्री फ्रॉम प्रीवियस सेकेंड यूरोपियन हर्निया सोसाइटी फॉर इंग्वानल हर्निया टर्मिनोलॉजी we have three term p and r p means primary and r means recurrent so in question they will either say p or r primary or recurrent. number 2 l m n f l means indirect lateral m means direct medial and f means femoral so indirect direct and femoral and finally we have 1 2 and 3 1 means less than 1.5 cm size of the ring defect 1.5 to 3 cm and more than 3 cm so the question they ask they will give you something like p l 2 cm what is this so it's a primary inguinal hernia l means lateral 2 means it is type 2 so less than defect size so this is a European Hernia Society classification here. M1 from three cell from from zephyr sub zephyr, M2 epigastric from like a three. So and this is the inguinal. P and R are primary and recurrent. One, two, and three are defect size. One point five, one point five to three, and three more than three. And L, F, F are lateral, medial, femoral, indirect, direct, and femoral. so they do get, uh, ask this question so i have been given only one hour so i'll stop now if you have any doubt any query feel free to ask but this topic has become very important the important topic which has been quite important last few years breast cancer thyroid trauma all these are very important for ages but number one varicose vein vascular disease has become very important every year i see one or two question especially ceap classification no c1 c2 c so varicose vein classification has become very important berger classification has become very important so vascular disease has become quite important previous slide is this one prena this one where you have three term primary and recurrent lmf for indirect direct femoral and 1 2 3 4 4, 4 less than defect size no? this is the size not the size of sac the size of the defect less than 1.5 cm Uh, both 1.5 to 3 and more than 3 cm so that's it i'll stop now and all the best to all of you so i'll see you again i do discuss complete git hernia and bariatric and dams other than that sometime i discuss uh, urology and other topics as well in some centers so if you have any doubt feel free to ask any doubt not from hernia only before this i mean this one No, there is no name for one to five. Oh, M one to M five, it's written here. Sub zero five, epigastric, umbilical, umbilical, and supraumbilical. It's written here. Okay. So, so do you have any question on surgery? Not just hernia. Any other topic? Any question? mesh should be placed on which layer mesh is placed anterior to conjoint tendon behind the external oblique so i'll draw and i'll explain this is asis ajit kumar watch inguinal ligament and rectus 
सपोज आई ओपन द स्किन एंड ओपन द एक्सटर्न ऑब्लिक नाउ आई हैव कंजॉइंट टेंडन हियर एक्सटर्न ऑब्लिक हैज बीन ओपन दिस इज द इंटरनल रिंग एंड द कॉर्ड स्ट्रक्चर सो आई विल टेक द कॉर्ड टू वन साइड हियर एंड पुट द मेश ऑन दिस लेयर व्हाट इज दिस लेयर फेशिया ट्रांसवर्सालिस एंड कंजॉइंट टेंडन so this is the fascia here the green area i'll put the mesh i'll put the mesh here anterior to fascia and conjoint tendon behind the external oblique okay clinical test for hernia i'll tell you which all hernia are ventral the ventral hernia are this area hernia here so epigastric hernia umbilical hernia and all incisional hernia they come under ventral hernia the clinical test the three important test for hernia rather four five first thing is you decide whether inguinal or inguino scrotal that is very important viva question when you have a case the, the first thing examiner will ask how can you say it's a hernia not a hydrocele it's a inguinal or inguino scrotal for that we use the term to get above the swelling like there's a swelling i can get above the swelling then it's a inguino scrotal hernia so it's a purely scrotal hernia uh sorry scrotal swelling not hernia you can get above the swelling it's in one scrotal you can get above the swelling so scrotal or inguinal scrotal that's the first thing second you see reducibility and if you can reduce it's important you cannot reduce it's emergency and in reducibility first part goes easily later part with difficulty this is omentum first part goes difficulty later part easy that's interesting third ring occlusion test deep ring is occluded and ask the patient to cough in ring occlusion test indirect hernia can be controlled direct hernia cannot be controlled ring occlusion test indirect hernia can be controlled direct hernia cannot be controlled number 4 finger invagination test in finger invagination test the cuff impulse strikes on tip in indirect hernia on finger pulp in direct hernia so you put the finger in as a patient to cough it strikes the tip it's indirect hernia strike the pulp it's direct hernia and finally we have three finger test called zeman test that's to three finger that's to differentiate direct and femoral wall so the test you do in hernia examination first you see it's a scrotal or inguinal scrotal that is why you get above the swelling number 2 reducibility first part reduce easily later on get stuck that's a momentum first part difficult later on easy that's in test number 3 ring occlusion test direct and indirect in direct hernia you cannot control by ring occlusion in direct hernia can be controlled number 4 finger invagination test the cuff impulse strikes at tip or pulp and tip is indirect pulp is direct and finally three finger test called zeman test so these are the tests you do there are some more tests but these are the important ones any other question rajat that was for you so i think that's it i'll stop now it's already 15 minutes beyond the time i was given so no other question right so i think treatment of cortical cysts please given that's a git question but i'll tell you the type 1 like this is the liver and this is the this is the common hepatic duct gall bladder and this is the cyst huh? so this is the blue part is coli docal cyst you simply cut here so you remove gallbladder and cyst now you are left with now you are left with liver 
common hepatic duct here the right and left duct and common this is the duodenum and this is the inferior part of bile which has been ligated so this area you have removed which included gallbladder and cyst now you make a ru and y ru and y is a different surgery which i'll discuss in git cut the jejunum here take jejunum up take it up and anastomose it here like this this part is anastomose to common hepatic duct this is called ru and y so what you have done common hepatic duct is anastomose to jejunum so the treatment of cortical cyst is excision of cyst plus ru and y hepatico jejunostomy you can see this is the hepatico jejunostomy here and this is ru and y so excise the cyst and do ru and y hepatico jejunostomy that's the treatment of type 1 the most common type of cholidocal cyst okay Okay, so I think I'll stop now. I don't see any, any other question. Thank you. All the best to all of you.